Hey everyone! This week we've got something just a little bit different for you. Chad had a chance to sit down with Steve Mueller and Devin Smith, who recently returned from running their first ever King of Hammers event. We do want to say a big thank you to all of our sponsors that make this show possible. Of course, CW Motorsports, Spang's Fab, Watch Communications, and 834 Powder Coat. So strap in as we bring you up to the race pace. Welcome to episode one of this season of Race Pace, uh, and we've got Steve Mueller and Devin Smith with us. And what we really want to know, guys, is how was your dream of going out to Hammers? Dream or? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I I loved it. I it was completely different than anything ever done before. So uh, I I absolutely loved it. I'm. Everybody calls King of the Hammers race a, a drug, and I'm addicted now. So yeah. I don't know if Devin agrees, but his his uh, his experience may differ. Yeah, Devin, how was it for yeah, you? I don't know because you didn't really get to drive like you normally do. Uh, you kind of played uh, co-pilot, which is not your normal thing, except for your boys. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um... I had a blast, really, to be honest with you. You know, when you're actually out doing it, doing the nitty-gritty and getting dirty and all the hard work, I mean, it sucks. It really does. But at the end of the day, I'd probably do it again, to be honest with you. <laughs> probably. <Yes. laughs> I just would drive Steve a little bit harder next time and say, I'm not getting out. Just go over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw you did a lot of jogging. <laughs> Uh, a little more than I wanted, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you guys but went out. You, uh, you guys went out and did your pre-running. Uh, like, uh, was it two weeks before? Uh, yeah, Polaris Factory Racing invited us out for a week of pre-running. Um, Devin didn't do the whole week. He had a lot, a lot of stuff going on back home with the the business and everything. He only came out for like the last two days, and in that time frame, we'd already broke the car. So, but, uh, we had the pre-runner car there, Cody's car there. So, um, I, I think we, when we went out to the desert for the first time, uh, he got the f first quick reality check of like this ain't anything like we're used to, <laughs> but, uh, he made it work and, and, and figured out the GPS and the navigation pretty quick. Uh, it's just no, well, they're, they're, GPS they're, now. <laughs> yeah, he can spell GPS now. Um, there is no arrows, at least when we were out there for pre-running. There is arrows during the actual race, but they're not like what you would think of here. Like, they're what, Devin? Like a mile in between? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's... Uh, oh, if you're lucky. Yeah, and most of them are run over, especially out in the desert. <laughs> like, you might as well not even count on them. But uh, the whole race is based on GPS. Like, that's half of the battle was, like, just figuring out the navigation and the course. So, yeah. um, it was pretty cool, but it's very eye-opening because, you know, we're so used to arrows over here and in the woods and stuff. And, uh, like, Devin was like, all right, we got a right-hand turn and five foot. Oh, no, we passed it. Because, I mean, when you're doing <laughs> 70 mile an hour, I mean, it's hard to understand leading out, you know, that turn or whatever like that. But he did a hell of a job during the race. He figured it out, and he did exactly what I what I had hoped he would do, and he, he nailed it. So you guys had he, a good – He was scared. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys had a pretty good qualifying run. I mean, it was just Steve in the car. Um, but you actually placed pretty well uh, for – being your first time out there yeah it was it was really shocking because uh i i was i had all intentions of going out there and just laying 110 percent down but the car um gary g-force racing had the car the entire day and most of the night before qualifying um they were trying to get the shocks tuned in hit gary and um uh pete which uh, pete was the one that did all the nost uh design and stuff like that they 
Pete was actually driving the car and testing while Dev and I were in the driver's meeting and stuff like that. So uh, I had no seat time in the car at all. Just literally took it back to the pit and we went out there, you know, for qualifying. Um, and once I got into the first turn, the body roll, and it was just kind of uneasy. Some of it was probably me just being uneasy. And I went from a quick 110% down to about an 80. Um, <laughs> and I still did really good. Uh, I was blown away with the results. I think I held top 10 almost all the way the entire day, almost until power hour. Um, and then power hours were all the heavy hitters are. Um, yeah. And I, I, we knew it, that was exactly what was going to happen. Every one of them was going to knock us down and, and we did, but we knew to have any chance of being, you know, top 10 or even on the podium, you had to be top 20, top 25. We ended up officially 26. So, um, I had zero complaints with that. I was very, very happy with it. And, um, holding that as long as I did up there up high was, was great. It was very eye opening. Yeah. So race day comes around. Like you said, you qualified 26. So you start 26. Anyway, um, I can only imagine the nerves sitting there on uh, what you normally watch on TV and you actually got to take off on the start line with the big jumps. Uh, kind of give us, you know, a little bit of your walk up, what it felt like when you're sitting there on the line, getting ready to go. And, you know, tell us how you felt. I, I wasn't so much nervous about the race per se, as I was, we still didn't know what the car was doing. Cause we went back for more suspension, um, and still no, really no drive time. And we had some mechanical issues, um, even before that. So I was more nervous about the car and not knowing what it was going to do. Um, you know, we line up, which is really cool. They start on time. It's amazing. Huh. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we started, um, it was a little hectic because, uh, they were like flag or pulling us up to the, the flagger to start us. And they were still zip tying transponders on the car. So we're like, uh, do we, do we go? Do we, I, we probably want that transponder. So, um, it was kind of hectic from that point, but once the green flag dropped, it was, it was game on. But then I quickly learned very fast that the suspension wasn't where it needed to be and went from 110 back down. And, uh, we, uh, we, we take the jumps. I'm obviously in the videos i'm i'm not on it as much as i i could have been and the suspension was just not where where it should have been um and as soon as we left the view of the cameras around the corner of the mountain where the whoops were four six eight foot i mean whoops um it was very apparent very quick that we were in for a bad day um and uh we got out to what was it race mile three yeah, race mile three, and uh, <laughs> we went for a little ride. So uh, yeah. we, we ended up rolling. We were uh, we got uh, stuck in the dust, and Devin was trying to keep me on the on the line. It was a hundred fifty foot line um, on the GPS, and we were kind of in the dust. But I knew I had the power to get around him and get out in clean air. And uh, and in the process of trying to get out in the dust or out of the dust and around him and overpower him. Um, we hit just have enough of a kicker, like just little blown sand dune off a bush, and it was enough to send us. We <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't a bad uh, roll. It was just it was just a uh, laid it over essentially. Uh yeah yeah um uh, but it happened dead smack in front of Ultra Four Crew with a Jeep, so oh. it couldn't have happened in a more better place. They literally drove right up, hooked up to us, got us righted back over, and we built the Devon back in and slowly took off he knows how to crash he knows how to crash and where to crash (laughs) (laughs) so Devin, steve had a bunch of uh of new technology for you to learn and operate you know in his spaceships that he has there so uh you know from your perspective sitting in there in a more technologically advanced car than what you're used to running in and what most people are used to running in uh and being the type of race where the co-driver has to get out, has to winch, has to, you know, spot for lines and everything else. Uh, how was that different from, from what you're used to? Well, I'm up for any challenge, really. I mean, whenever somebody gives me a job, I'm going to try to do it the best I can. But at the end of the day, I often wondered why Steve had a actual driver co-pilot 
for him. But <laughs> it worked out in the end. I mean, I understand why you had me go. Uh, it was an experience for both of us, really. Um, I had fun doing it, and I learned a lot. I mean, hell, I even learned how to spell GPS. I mean, that's a plus on my side. <laughs> yeah. So the car, I know you're used to, and you've been in Steve's cars before, but uh, the car felt a little bucky to you guys, I guess. And I think uh, you made the comment of yeah. calling it old bucky. The old bucky. Um, and, you know, it was. they said it was one of the roughest um, – hammers track that they've had period and everybody was fighting it not just steve but i mean the car could have been a lot better it, it needed to be stiffer for sure um we could have been a lot faster i know that but yeah. uh, steve did good with what he had and uh i feel like i could have pushed him a little bit harder but at the end of the day it was his race and i wanted him to feel comfortable in it right yeah, I mean, I think we've all gone out there and have the car uh, not really perform the way we want. But once you get out there, you just kind of, okay, this is how it is. I mean, we're going to run what we got and do the best that we can with it. Because uh, the other alternative is put it back in the trailer and go home. And that's not really an option when you're out that far. Yeah, and that's ex- exactly no, what happened. We, we, the, we had Cody's car as the pre-runner there, and we had been pre-running. We went out in the desert twice. We were in that full loop twice, and we were way faster in Cody's car. I was more comfortable and used to Cody's car, but my car wouldn't – the actual race car wouldn't push anything like Cody's did. So it was another one of those quick reality checks getting in the actual race car going, oh, okay, I, I was able to do 50 here. I can't do 50 now, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, 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 that definitely uh, didn't help matters. But you yeah. got it. You almost have to do that for that type of race. You have to have a pre-run car and, and a race car. Um, you just have to. I, I think your pre-run car has to be very, very similar to your race car. Because yes. like your experience, you have two different cars, so you feel like, okay, I just ran this car at this pace. You jump into the, into your race car, and it's nothing like your pre runner. So yeah. it's just like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? Yep. Yeah, um, and you know that takes a real money investment. And Steve and I were talking uh, prior to actually starting recording this episode that it's a real money investment just to go out there, being a Midwest you know base group here. Um, it's a real I, time and money I, investment. I, I was told that I kind of laughed about it. I was told if you want to do hammers, you better be able to pull out your driveway and like 20 grand on fire. That is no joke. Then, oh. then some. I'm sure so if yeah. anybody has any intuitions of, of even attempting it, think, think very, very, very big money. Cause it is. Yeah. So that's why I'm taking my car and my trailer and Steve's taking care of the rest of it. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> right. I owe you a co-pilot and have job now. So, uh, yeah, Steve's going to outfit your X three with all kinds of new bells and whistles. So that he has something to do in there. <laughs> Actually, oh, I think Devin's got more switches in his car this year than I had ever mind. So it just needs the GPS. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't often have to, you know, have GPS in the woods. You know, the arrows are everywhere. You kind of follow the trail and, you know, it's not that big of a deal. So, and we, and, and most of the time it, it was a burned in obvious line, but you could, that's Devin, you could get in trouble real fast out there and be off course. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you just take, if you take a line uh, on the map and, you have two lines where the map you think you should go and you start following a line. You think, okay, this line's going to jump back into the line we should be on. Well, eventually the next thing you know, you just veering off farther and farther away from the, the map, the course that's marked and you, you better get back on. Cause if not, you may not, you may end up in never, never land. <laughs> yeah. So the, the race was, you know, what you guys kind of, well, I guess not what you expected, a little bit different. There's always surprises thrown at you due to the car. Um, and the train was rougher uh, this year. I heard that from other people too than others. But uh, 
why don't you give us a little bit of a how'd your race end up? You want to take this one, Devin? How'd it end? <laughs> you, you, okay, I'll start with this one. Uh, I've talked it too ended much. Up with an old, it, it ended up with an old man. I won't say old man because I'm not old, but I'm I'm middle aged, and I was I was done. I was done when see we had probably maybe an hour left, I think. And where we were at, we had probably a good hour in the rock still to go. And Steve said, I think we could make it. And I said, I'm done. I'm just ready to go home. I'm just tired. <laughs> My legs are done and stuff. And we only had three wheel drive, I think, at that point. We've already had uh, the four wheel drive go out, uh, the front axle broke. I knew if we broke another axle or something was to happen, that we were going to be stuck farther back in the rock and it would be harder to get out so steve and i just decided it was wise to just go out and be done uh even by the time we got back to the pit the race was officially over so um i mean it was uh, uh it was it was hard it was a it's a very 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 tough uh, race it, very, it is just everything all together yeah I, I, my hat's off to steve for doing it so uh, that's good. So you've both done Heartland Challenge, which is a four-hour race. This is what? How many hours did you guys actually run? I mean, it's right around there, wasn't it? A little, little more. Is that right? We were in the car we from take off? Uh, what? Um, oh, I got a Zoom meeting notification. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Um, <laughs> wait, we, we let's we see. We left the line what? at eight a.m. and we went. We yeah. got back to the pits at. Six five thirty six p.m. Yeah, six thirty. Oh, like so that. you were in the car sign. Yeah, you were in the car significantly longer. Well, kind of, oh, yeah, long kind of. I I was in the car longer than Devin. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Devin got but, uh, up and jogged around for a while. What Devin yeah, had mentioned? Yeah, it, I think we took a, we took a couple breaks. I mean, with the four yeah, guys going out. So. Yeah, I lost my front diff, not mechanically, but electronically. Um we were going through what was it outer limits or Jack Nor something. And Devin's like, Hey, your front wheel drive ain't working. And I, was, I looked down and the ECU says it lost connection with the, with the front diff. And I was like, okay, well that's easy. It came unplugged. We popped a wire off a rock, whatever. Um, Devin checked everything and it was obvious, not obviously anything wrong. So we had to basically pull off out of the line and uh, get the four wheel drive, get the diff back working. I ended up hard wiring it to my, um, uh, front light bar switch and got us back in the race but that was probably a good 30 minute setback in itself but yeah. gave us a break to you know drink some water eat some granola bars and basically take a quick lunch break while i was fixing the car so yeah it's not i would say comparing to heartland i mean actual just turning laps you know it it doesn't even compare because you can you know things are going to happen you're going to get a little break um you know it's it's not. I would say Devin probably doesn't agree with me, but it's not quite nearly as exhausting as Heartland was. It probably was for him, but not for me. It, it was for me because I had to get out of the car and winch, run up rocks, and chase your ass up rocks. Sorry for <laughs> the language, but it's the truth. Yeah. Um, but as far as if I put it on a, a level of me being the co-pilot versus me racing at the Heartland, I was more wore out at Heartland. Than I was here, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I could see that because Devin what was it in 2019, 2019, whatever it was when you you got third at Heartland. 18 or 19, yeah. Yeah, um, man, you were a zombie sitting in the car at the end. I mean, yeah. and not nothing against you. Like everyone was just like, I'm done. And you know, I understand that Hammers is different from Heartland, and you know, they're just two completely different things. I mean, I think a lot of people that do XC racing have done either the Heartland Challenge or something similar. And to kind of give them all a comparison of what it would be like to do hammers is kind of what I'm going for here. Trying to get your guys' opinion. Because right. there's not too many people who have done both. But Yeah, the thing is about hammers is you know not to go 110% through the desert because you won't make it through the rock. Right, like Heartland, you have to go 110 percent for four hours, period, or you're not going to do good. Right. Um, 
but you know, there again, you're not going fast to rock the hammers. So yet you get to bre- you get to breathe a little bit in between the desert stretches. So I don't think the fatigue is as bad because you're not going as hard so long. Yeah. That's my opinion. On it. Steve, you kind of feel the same way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. It's, yeah. It's, it's a, it, uh, if you can survive the Heartland, you can survive uh, hammers. I okay. Think. Even, I mean, the rocks and all. I mean, uh, I. Your you co-pilot may not, but <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. There, there are those guys that just 110 percent through it and make it, but it comes at a serious, serious cost. I mean, you know, a pile of five diffs laying there. Do the right. math. You know, right. I mean, it it costs serious, serious money to be able to do it. So, you know, yeah. So, uh, you guys, uh, what you in, where did you end up placing your official results? We didn't. You, it didn't even didn't. give you a position. DNF. Nope. Really? You have I, to hit the podium to even get an official position. Now that uh, may change, uh, yeah. like the official results that they had released a couple days after. It was only the people that hit the podium. Then it was. 44 I think total out okay. of 113 out of yeah so okay less than half yep. yeah yep well I mean but it, you did it for the experience it wasn't that you were going out there I mean you were going to do your best but you know what I mean you weren't going out there to say oh yeah I'm winning yeah, yeah, and it, you know that frame of mind always changes, right? And like Devin told me, he's like, "Do not go it unless you uh, you even want to uh, go top 10. I'm like, "Yeah, but let's 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 back it down a notch. Let's just try to finish." But no, I mean, absolutely, you you you're gonna you have that kind of money wrapped up in it, and and you got a lot going through your head. Like, um, it was. It, it was hard for me as being as mechanically inclined and, and hands on as I am. I had to, I had to force myself to step away, let the crew take care of the car, Devin take care of his thing. It, that was the hardest thing for me from being the jack of all trades to you drive, you worry about driving and figuring that out. And um, so it was hard to make those adjustments. And And like I said, you, you have all good intentions going in there, but you get out there and you see um, the uh, maybe uh, people have seen the video by now, but we had a guy roll in front of us and it was the gnarliest roll I've ever seen in UTVs, even recreational wise. Um, <laughs> Devin, Devin, you know, I'm going to go check. I wasn't one. scared. I wasn't <laughs> scared. I was just like freaked out. Yeah, yeah. But you, you, you see like something like that happen right in front of you and you have to start dialing back and, and thinking like, you know, um, and, and start placing value on things. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, it quickly went from, we have a good chance at top 10 to we're not even going to finish, you know, it's just, you get stuck in the traffic, you get stuck in the rocks, things break, things start going South. And, um, but I, I would not trade it for anything in the world. It is, uh, if I could do it every year, I do it every year, but uh, it's a serious, <laughs> serious commitment. It really yeah. is. Well, financial wise and time wise and everything else. I mean, I know a lot of the prep you went through to get that car ready and just, I mean, like not even counting the money you spent months and months and months just getting the car together. Yeah. 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 Just the, the, the tech is a real thing. It's not, it's not like anything, uh, uh, you will find over here or lack thereof. I mean, it's a real deal there. Right. Um, we failed tech because we didn't have oh, fireproof socks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a real deal over there. And it, for all, for all intents and purposes, it's, uh, because of safety, right? At the end of the day, it's not, you know, uh, the, I, I personally thought the failing us for no fireproof stocks was a little excessive, but at the end of the day, it was all about safety and yeah. they take it very, very serious. And Devin and I got to, the, I was going to say, Devin and I got to watch it right event, in front of our face. Though, yeah. Yeah. It's such a huge event. They have to though. It's so yeah. massive. I mean, it's not, it's nothing local, it's right? Nothing yeah. against the locals or anything like that. It's just so massive. They have to cover their butt. Yeah. 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 
Well, uh, good to see you guys again. Good to, you know, hear the stories of hammers and, you know, it sounds like, uh, what they say is true. Once you go, once you want to just keep going back. So, uh, Oh, any- for, oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I, even if I don't race it, I, I probably will be there just to spectate and drink beer. Cause it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just an experience. You just, once you go, you, you, you're not going to ever miss it again. So, yeah. Well, uh, an experience, but yeah. Any, uh, any parting words from the two of you guys, anything you want to throw in there, any experiences you had that, you know, they're your favorites or whatever, before we get out of here. I'll let Devin go first. <laughs> let me go first. Yeah. Uh, the biggest experience for me was to actually, to be honest with you, to learn and don't get me wrong. I know how to read a map. Steve, okay, <laughs> GPS, map, however you want to look at it. I mean, doing that part was a big thing with me. And you know me, when we pre-ran versus when we ran the race, I remember spots in the track. And I remember Steve going, oh, I don't remember none of this. And I was like, I, do. I don't need that map, you know, for half the stuff we ran yesterday. But it was awesome learning how to do all that and learning, you know, when we were coming into a certain section and and uh when we were making our next lap you know etc cetera, etc cetera. uh that was a big experience for me so uh i mean you always learn something from when you do something new like that um i don't know that i'd want to like even desert race that stuff i'm just an xp guy through and through i still yeah. want to stay home and do it. that's just me yeah good deal steve what about you i i just have to t- thank everybody that made it possible uh and i'm not just saying from a sponsor or you know people that had my back um from that perspective but the crew uh we had i think 10 total people on site making this happen from pit crew to the girls helping cook and um just the logistics side of that is is just huge in itself to bring everybody 1800 miles away and then back home um so I, I have to thank everybody. And it, one of my biggest memories is, uh, like I said earlier, having to go force myself hands off to be thinking, you know, hey, we got a driver's meeting. We got this thinking about, you know, thinking about being an, a, a driver, you know, and, uh, you know, we, we broke the car. We were going through the suspension and the crew just nailed it, just trying to get that car back up and do everything they possibly could finding parts, driving and getting parts, hitting up all the vendors. Um, that was probably the most memorable thing for me. Uh, Cause like I said, that's the complete opposite of me. I'm so hands-on and in depth with everything. So um, thank you to everybody that, that was on the crew and helped and, and, and make that possible. Um, the, uh, at the end of the day, we just ran out of time trying to get the suspension, right? It's nothing against Gary or, or G force or anything like that. Like, I should have set myself up better to be out there ahead way more ahead of time and, and doing the suspension tuning. Um, and Gary really put it in perspective for me. Um, when Phil Blurton, you know, uh, the, the can am desert racer out there, the really successful desert racer says it's the worst desert he's ever raced. Cause it was that rough and that bad that really opened my eyes and, and it makes uh, for some extreme tuning challenges. Um, and again, we just ran out of time trying to tune it and get it to where it should have been. Um, and it's uh, nobody's fault, but my own for, for the time. But, uh, again, thanks to everybody that made it possible and, and the crew, I mean, (laughs) they, they were probably ready to walk out at some points, but, uh, they, they really did. They nailed it out of the park. People that helped out, like just all the people that help that you don't even know. Oh yeah. 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 We, you you know, it's, you get an address, right. When you go to King of the Hammers, your pit, you literally get like a street address. Um, and, and you, you put that out there and there's people walking up. Devin knew a guy from Indiana. Um, and he walked up and he offered to get a radio and help spot us through some of the rocks. And, um, David Sauter and Ben Johnson from CNR came out and helped. I mean, just all the people that just walk up to your pit um, and and try to help PJ you. PJ and Keith were out there even. PJ yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Keith know. Gardner from uh, Precision Powder Coat yeah. and PJ, yeah. they were out there. I mean, it's just uh, uh, 
amazing you know the amount of people and help and support that it, just on site right you get through all these hurdles you get there and then people uh, all the helicopter footage and all the all the video like I didn't have any of that. Like we were literally in the trailer working on the car and a guy walks up and says, Hey, I'm, I'm Pat with turn two media. We do helicopter and video footage, you know, it just like those opportunities and, and people trying to help you out and support you all the time are out there, you know? So it was really cool to uh, experience that. So, yeah. Yep. I ran into Michael Lee looking for parts and he gave me a drive shaft for Steve. I mean, guys, yep. just stuff like that. Racers helping racers. It's just awesome. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. well, that's good to hear. It sounds like uh, the racer community is every bit like it is here. You know, everybody just helping everybody where they can. So that's yep, it is. That's good to hear. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll wrap it up here. We're going to get out of here. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, we're going to end our videos a little bit differently here, I think, or at least this one we are. So uh, just want to say thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.